Oh, man. Well, I mean, I've had like this sinus cold whatever thing for three weeks now. And I'll be on. I'll tell you what. I'm sick of it. You know, I went back to the doctor, got some antibiotics. But I, I mean, my nose has been stuffed for for weeks now. It's been like three weeks. And I'll, I'll tell you something. You know, I'll tell you what, because I've been thinking about it. Like why, you know, uh, they don't get rid of it that fast. And I think the doctors are in on it with the tissue company. You know how many tissues I've bought? I mean, I've spent more money in tissues than than medical bills and, and medication of things. I mean, they, they must be making a fortune from, from these tissues. That's what I think it is. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to talk about how to deal with an annoying aspect of the Microsoft graph when you're working with PowerShell, and that's called paging. I'd be very surprised if, if uh, they don't get kickbacks from the tissue companies and they're, they're all in on it. You know, you you watch, something, something's going on. Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. All right, so we're gonna start with a very common scenario that you might do with PowerShell in the graph. Uh, I'm gonna get something, I'm gonna get all groups. So let me first get my groups URI, uh, that's, uh, graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash groups. Um, and then I'm going to make my call. So my uh, groups, or we'll say all groups are equal to, we are going to do uh, invoke mg graph request. Method is get. And the URI is the groups URI. I'm going to run all this. Make sure you've connected first uh, with connect MG graph. I did that already, so I'm in. Okay, and now we're just going to get the value. So groups is equal to all groups dot value. And that should pull everything out. And we're going to just call groups here. That's all our groups. Or is it? Well, I'm not going to look through each one of these and count. That would be absurd, and I certainly don't have that kind of time. So what we'll do is let's do groups.count. It says I have 100 groups. Well, that doesn't sound right to me. So when I go to the entry portal and look at my groups, I have 245 groups. So why the discrepancy? Is, is the PowerShell I wrote you know, wrong? Well, no, it's just when you're interacting with the Microsoft graph, it does something called paging, right? And paging kind of breaks up the amount of results that get returned to you um, just for efficiency. And so it's not too much coming through. There's a lot of data going back and forth. So the way paging works is it breaks it up. Think about it into pages. You know, it's like you're looking on a website and you want to list all, uh, you know, I don't know, you want to look at bathrobes, right? And maybe you're on uh, walmart.com or something and they're showing you 25 bathrobes per page or 50 bathrobes, right? Uh, they're not going to give it to you all at once. They're going to break it up. It's, it's kind of the same thing here. So instead of giving you all your groups, they're going to give you the first page, right? Um, also, you know, called pagination. Um, and then what they do is they give you a link to the next page where you'll have the next hundred. So in my case, I would have uh, three pages, right? A hundred, a hundred and 45 to make. 245. But if I want to get all my groups, you know, how do we do that using PowerShell when talking to the graph? So before we solve for it, let's take a look at what's going on. I'm going to go to the graph explorer. I'm going to change this to beta because I, I like to, and I'm going to call groups. So this is the same call I was making in PowerShell. Now take a look at this. This response contains an O data property, O data next link. Click to follow the link. Well, that's because it's only giving me the 100 back. So if we click that link, there we go. That's the next one. So that's the next call. I'll do it again. And just like I said, the third page is the end where we're going to have the 45 groups. So there's all three pages. So what we have to do is we have to figure out a way to, uh, as we get our groups and invoke our request, get that link you know, so hold on, I'll go, I'll go back a second. So we have to figure out a way to get this link 
right? And you can see it's right here, odata next link, and invoke that and get all the members, and then keep invoking that until there aren't any more. Because you see, if we go to the last page, there is no next link because we've reached the end. So let's rewind a little bit here. We're still gonna keep our groups URI because that's what we're gonna hit. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna assemble our own collection for the groups because we're gonna loop through each page taking the amount of groups there. So we'll take the first 100, then the second 100, and then finally the 45. There's, you know, 245. So we're gonna call this, um, let's call it all groups. And it'll be an empty uh, collection there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a do while. Do while basically is tells PowerShell, hey, do this thing while a condition exists. So in our case, we want to keep looping through the uh, the next. We want to go to the next OData link, right? As long as it exists. And when it stops existing, we'll stop collecting the groups. So what we'll do is we'll say our response is equal to invoke mg graph request method is get and the URI is the groups URI. Then what we'll do is everything in there we're going to add to all groups. So we'll say all groups plus the response dot value. So that'll bring back the first hundred. Then what we'll do is we'll take the original groups URI and we're going to change it, say equals the response. So everything that came back and specifically, we're going to reference that next link property. O data next link. And we're going to do this while there's a groups URI. So eventually this will not exist because we'll have gotten to the last page. Let's run that. Now, if I do all groups count, we got all 245 back. Hopefully that helps. I know it's bit me in the butt a lot of times because I forget to do it. And uh, you would think after so long you remember, but no, um, you'll be in the middle of trying to figure something out, going through all your Intune devices, going through all your apps and something just doesn't add up or you're like that, that number seems low or you're just missing data. So honestly, it's a good habit to get into when you're, when you're collecting the data sets in uh, PowerShell, put them through that do while loop. Uh, let me know in the Discord uh, what you do. Maybe you use a different function. You have another way to solve for it. I'm always interested in that. And uh, we'll be seeing you.